England, the winter of 1960. At this time, power from a new source went out over the lines that served the northeastern section of the United States. Power from the atom, generated by the Yankee Atomic Electric Company at Rowe, Massachusetts. This site was selected because of its convenience to existing power transmission facilities and abundant water source. Yankee Steel Containment Sphere houses the reactor and associated equipment. In February 1960, the reactor vessel was installed. Fission heat from its core raises the 2,000 PSI closed cycle water to an average temperature of 514 degrees Fahrenheit. It then passes through four vertical steam generators to produce steam at about 467 degrees Fahrenheit and 500 PSI for operation of the turbine generator. Among Yankee's other novel features is the addition of boron to the coolant water to reduce reactivity during shutdown. and an in-core instrumentation system for monitoring reactor core performance. It also provides automatic readout in the control room. This system indicates startup rate and flux level for all power ranges and provides shutdown signals should core power become too high. Total control rod drop time is less than two seconds. In normal operating ranges, the primary plant is controlled by the semi-automatic positioning of control rods. The vent and drain system facilitates draining of the primary plant for maintenance purposes and also permits venting and purging gases from the plant systems. Fluids and gases which must be discharged from the primary plant are first processed through the waste disposal system. Here it receives, contains, treats and safely disposes of all radioactive wastes so as to yield concentrated liquid wastes, solid waste and purified water of very low activity. Facilities are provided for remote underwater removal and transfer of spent fuel assemblies from the reactor vessel to the spent fuel storage pit. Installation of new fuel assemblies may also be handled in this way. The first core was installed in July 1960 and went critical one month later. After various tests, the plant began generating electricity in November. This core contained a uniform loading of 76 fuel assemblies enriched to 3.4 weight percent of U-235 in solid cylindrical uranium dioxide pellets. These fuel assemblies yielded an average of 8,470 megawatt days per metric ton of contained uranium. The lifetime of Core 1 was 18 months, from mid-November 1960 to mid-May 1962. During this time, there was an interesting example of operational flexibility. 
The plant had originally been rated at 134 megawatts electric. Initial power level was 125 megawatts electric, but was increased to 150 megawatts electric in June of 1961. On January 18, 1962, it had delivered over 1 billion kilowatt hours. However, power demands were at a peak at that time. And so, instead of refueling, advantage was taken of the reactivity made available by gradual reductions in reactor power level and temperature, thus obtaining a four-month plant operational stretch-out. When the reactor was finally shut down, it was still producing power at 85 megawatts electric. Total energy produced by the first core was over one and one quarter billion kilowatt hours. The second core was identical to the first, except that two central fuel assemblies from core one were retained to receive extended burnout. The two extended burn-up assemblies, as well as selected assemblies from Core 1, were examined in detail and found to be in excellent condition. After refueling, the plant was returned to operation on September 20th, 1962. Early in October, power level was increased from 150 to 170 megawatts electric. Lifetime of the second core was one year less 18 days. And total energy output was just under one and one quarter billion kilowatt hours. The successful operation of core one assemblies in core two to 22,248 megawatt days per metric ton produced data which confirmed the ability of Yankee fuel assemblies to withstand long exposure. Longer exposure enables higher burn-up, with resulting lower fuel costs. Core 3 was a multi-region core containing both partially spent Core 2 assemblies and fresh fuel enriched to 4.1 weight percent of U-235. Core 3 was installed during October 1963. And after routine tests, the plant resumed generating electricity on November 12, 1963. Plant output was raised to 185 megawatts electric at the close of the year. Its two-region cycle loading pattern is expected to achieve an average discharge fuel burn-up much greater than could have been obtained from two single-region cores. Today, Yankee is operated by a total staff of 69. Maintenance records show that approximately 160 man-hours per month are expended on primary plant instrumentation and control. About 80 hours per month on secondary and auxiliary plant components. And about 280 man-hours per month on site service facilities, radiation monitoring, radiochemistry, equipment maintenance, and miscellaneous work. For the month of January 1964, plant utilization was 98.28%. This demonstrates a typical month when no refueling activities were in progress. Another measure of its efficiency has been cost. The average cost per kilowatt hour of power delivered has been just over 10 mils as compared to the cost of conventional power in the area, which is 8 to 10 mils. Yankee was designed as a production plant for a group of privately owned utility companies. They've had almost four years experience with it and the best proof that they're satisfied with its performance lies in the fact that they have already ordered another similar plant for operation in 1967. The Yankee plant design, based on simplicity, 
reliability, and safety has proved itself and made a significant contribution to the new art of nuclear power.